Hey, my friend, welcome back to the MindShift Podcast. I'm excited to have you here because I have the pleasure of interviewing Ryder Carroll. He is the New York Times bestselling author and inventor of the Bullet Journal Method, a simple yet profoundly effective framework for international, for intentional living that has garnered a worldwide following. Through his approachable and practical methodology, Ryder has revolutionized the way we approach organization and personal development, providing a much needed antidote to the overwhelming complexity of modern life. His work is a beacon of simplicity and purpose, empowering individuals to chart their course with precision and embrace a more mindful, intentional path in an age of constant distraction. Now, I found writer's method through my own journey recently, and it was very interesting that now he's here on the show. When I say that I just in the mail yesterday received my bullet journal and his best-selling book, <laughs> it literally just happened. So please, Ryder, welcome to the MindShift Podcast. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I am glad to be here. I am super excited to have you here. I read in your backstory as I was looking at uh, purchasing um, the journal that you built this product for yourself. Why don't you share a little bit about that story with our audience? Sure. So the bullet journal method as people see it today took me decades of development because I developed it as a solution to my own challenges, specifically growing up with ADD before that was a understood term and it's also before the internet. So I didn't have any tools to help me navigate the condition. So I started to create my own and the only tool that I had was a paper notebook. So one solution at a time. And over many years, I eventually went up, go, went to college, studied design. So that started to change the way that I actually designed my own tools. And then after college, I started working in product development, specifically digital product development. So learned how to design systems, how systems interacted with one another. And I took all of that and brought it back into the analog space to help design my life. And eventually I ended up sharing it with people and to my great surprise, they thought it was pretty useful. What's it like developing something? What is, what's the feeling like when you develop something to solve a problem you have, and then the world at large is, is accepting it, using it and loving it. What's that like? In my case, I think it was really strange because I never assumed that it would work for anybody else. It was never designed with that purpose in mind. If anything, it was designed for my mind. And when you think about ADD, a big part is that your mind jumps from shiny object to shiny object to shiny object constantly. So I needed to have a way to organize that kind of mind, a mind that is easily distractible, a mind that shifts in the way that it thinks as well. Like for me, I can easily think in images, in short form writing, long form writing within an hour, just constantly different kinds of ways that I process data. And so I had to figure out a way to organize all that. And I think because it had to be that flexible, it ended up mapping onto the way many people think. Either they think like me, or they think visually, or they think short form, or they think long form. This whole system was designed to be able to handle all of those things. So when I first started sharing it with people, I was really shy about it because I never thought of this as a solution for other people. I always felt like it was a crutch for a faulty mind. I think I designed this because I can't think like other people can. I grew up in a school that was K through 12 and that's, it has its, perks for sure. But one thing that becomes really clear is that, you know, when you start at K, all kids are pretty much identical. All you have to do is play and sleep. But over time, you can quickly start to see when your peers start pulling ahead of you, like all of a sudden, these kids who are exactly the same as you 
are better at something and then they're way better at something and you're not good at something. So the division was really painfully clear. So I had to design these tools to help me kind of get through all of this. So when I shared it with people, I was very shy about it because it would expose that difference in ability in some ways, like look at how much work it takes for me to get to where I assume you are. And as I obviously got older and started to get exposed to a lot more people, I realized that we all struggle. Everybody has challenges in different ways, whether it be with organization or focus or anxiety or mental health, physical health, there are differences between us that people are trying to address and trying to navigate. And because the system was designed to be so flexible, it mapped onto all sorts of different kinds of differences. And that's, that was a real surprise. It was definitely not intentional, but it's definitely something that I've leaned into as I continue to develop the methodology because it's far from finished. It can't be finished. It would be contradicting myself. Like a big part of this is to develop your systems along with your own development because the system that served you in one part of your life will not, the 14 year old system will not work for the 25 year olds life as the 25 year old system is not going to work for the 45 year old person's life. So the thing that's beautiful about this thing that I built, and I have to say it's an accidental feature is that it's highly adaptable to any stage in somebody's life. Hmm. When someone picks up the journal, it is unlike inside anything I've ever seen in a journal. It is the, it is the stark opposite of what you think about in a journal. And for those of you that are on YouTube, uh, I'm holding up a copy of my journal. It just arrived. I literally just took the plastic off of it last night. I can't wait to dive into the methodology, um, which I'm going to do here during my December break. And the question I have is what led some of your thought processes to create such an open canvas for the user? And I think it's beautiful in a, it, because we find ourselves, I've been using journals for 30 years of different sorts, and I have to bring and map my thoughts into what they've scripted onto the page. You have done it 180 degrees differently to the point where everyone can authentically themselves bring themselves to the journal. And I don't know if I'm saying that the way you conceived it, but that's how I've sensed it. Share a little bit about the concept of the design and the concept of the methodology for those that mm -hmm. are listening. Yeah. So I think it's important to create a distinction. A lot of times when people hear bullet journaling, they think of like crafty notebooks or really highly decorated notebooks. They have to be an artist, all these things. Something that gets lost often is that bullet journaling uses writing and uses a notebook as a platform, but the bullet journal method is what you bring into it, right? So you can bullet journal electronically, but it's kind of like the difference between yoga and a yoga mat, right? So the idea is that I teach a methodology that allow people to create their own solutions. So I lay this foundation of how to think about organizing information, how to capture your thoughts and your feelings. And I know that when I was a kid growing up, especially with learning difficulty, when people try to shove down these like very rigid methodologies down my neck or down my throat, it, it was always met with resistance. Like, here's another thing that I have to learn. It's hard enough to just do the homework. It's hard enough to, you know, be able to pay attention. Now I have to hold this whole thing in my head or like fill in the boxes according to somebody else's mind. So for me, it was really important that every bullet journal is a reflection of the needs of their author. I don't know what you need in your life. I don't know what problems you're trying to solve. So as a designer, 
you know, as a product designer thing for me is like, how do I create a blank canvas that has just enough structure to help people think? So for example, all of our notebooks have a dot grid, which sometimes is mistaken for the bullet journals, dot grid, but they're separate. Dot grids existed before my time, but I like a dot grid because it has the flexibility of a blank page with the structure of a gridded notebook. And that allows you to write long form and keep your sentences straight. It also allows you to turn it into a grid. It allows you to actually draw. I love dot grids because I did a lot of logo design in them and figured out different UX flows and all these things. It's like whatever I need to think about, however I need to think about it, I wanted a canvas that would allow me zero barrier to entry. And so when you look at these notebooks, there's so many features that are almost entirely invisible that I had to create an entire set of just instructions just to point things out. And that, that was a real fun challenge. And now we're in the second version of the notebook. The first notebook was a little bit more traditional. This one is based on five or six years of user feedback to make it even more of a blank canvas and more structured at the same time. And there's, there's, there's small little touches that people wouldn't realize. Like for example, the, the empty space around the border of the pages is there for two reasons that are almost opposite to one another. For people who struggle to keep their handwriting clean and don't like to read it, the blank space actually makes it much easier for the eye to see order and make it feel much cleaner. And for those people who like to illustrate their pages and have beautiful handwriting, it gives them much more surface area to play with. So they can have much larger borders to write beautiful titles in it. And it also allows the book to be oriented and have different orientations and still function. So they're, they're giving people a lot of flexibility <laughs> while not completely letting them free fall <laughs> is the balance that I tried to achieve. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Like how do you have a design that completely disappears and still supports right. the user? Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm listening to you talk about it from a product perspective, but also from a personal perspective. And I always find intrigue in, I love product creators who created something for themselves and then the world loves it. Right. But I think there was some intentionality around it at some point where you're like, huh, I'm not the only one who does this. And so let's keep through that product feedback. The revisions have come. I got to tell you that I'm not sure. Uh, I know the, the, the leather, the bindings, it feels, it, I know this sounds silly, but it feels quality. It feels it didn't come from no, didn't come from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> it came from a quality manufacturer. There was a lot of thought. There's a lot of intent. There's a lot of great packaging. Um, and it just felt different when I, when I, when I received it, uh, the book feels different and it makes sense to understand now through your product design background, um, that I didn't just get a book from an author. I didn't just get a journal from someone who needed it as a part of their coaching program. <laughs> um, and I appreciate that. And I just wanted to, uh, to share that. Can you Thank spend you. a few minutes describing the bullet journal methodology? Mm -hmm. We can't describe how it works in a setting like this, but can you give us a overlay of the methodology of using it? And I want to preface it by saying when I open most journals, they want me to start thinking about my goals. They want me to write down my habits. Uh, they want me to sort of identify either bucket list items or big projects that are on my agenda. There's almost always a calendar of some sort that I can fill in. They got real slick with it lately by taking the dates off so you can write your own dates in as if that's supposed to be a big deal. I'm sorry I'm picking on some of these other things, but I have a bunch of them in my closet. I'm looking at them right now. Uh, I buy a lot of products. <laughs> But let's talk a little bit about the methodology, because I think there's some nuances to it that I found intriguing, and I'd love to hear them from you, the creator. Sure. Yeah, the way that I like to think about it is that the bullet journal method is a mindfulness practice that's designed as a productivity system. So yes, on the one hand, it's 
very much designed to help you organize what you're doing. That was the original intent for me, really, to figure out how to be focused and organized and productive. And I got there. I got there in my life. I got the promotion. I got the raise. I started my own companies, this, that, and the other thing. And it just never was enough. Like I thought that once I would be productive, I figured out how to do this because it was such a like foreign territory for me growing up with ADD. You know, I was off the walls and never could pay attention. I was in trouble. And I'm like, okay, if I can get it all together, then my life will be good. Right. And I figured out a system to help me get there. And then I got there and it felt kind of empty. Right. And I was like, well, now that I have everything that I was supposed to want, but I don't feel anything here. It just feels mm -hmm. like I have to fill that space with yet another project. I'm like, well, if I don't want this, what do I want? Right. I just started a company. It was successful. I was like, went to the office a week after launch and I'm like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> like, I don't want to do wow. this thing. Right. It spent years wow. building this thing and it's like, okay, I have a product. I launched the company. Everything's great. And I couldn't care less. So if I don't want this, what do I want? And it was like one of the first times in my life where I honestly asked myself, like, I, I don't know what I want. What do I want? And I was like, wow, that's the question that should be driving everything to have a real understanding of what is meaningful to me and what I want. And then I took this system that I designed to get very clear about how to navigate the world around me and turn it 180 degrees. I'm like, how do I navigate the world inside of me? Right. And start to understand how I think and I feel about what I do. And that's where the mindfulness practice comes in. So on the one hand, it helps you organize what you're doing. But for me, the, the real game changer is that it really helps you organize why you're doing what you're doing to be mindful of the purpose behind the productivity. So you'll see that our tagline is purpose, power, productivity. And that's what I mean. It's like if you do things to arrive at meaning, you're never going to get there. But if you do things because they start with being meaningful, that's when everything changes because everything there is to help you embody the thing that you care about. Even when you don't fully understand what that might be, it's like, I am working on this thing because it matters to me. That's all. That's the beginning. And I feel like that's really, for me, that was something that was missing from the very beginning with hustle culture. It's like, what are you hustling for? And what happens the day after you get there? Now, usually the answer is a big question mark, and I feel like that was a missing piece for me. So Bullet Eternal is very much about figuring out why, getting clear on why, staying, staying clear on why, especially when things get rough. Right. And the whole time figuring out how to take that why and make it actionable. So it's the two parts together that I feel like make this so different from other approaches that I had ever seen. Right. Man, uh, you're speaking my language when you say, why are we doing this? Uh, I've often used the, I say, I've often said, why is the one of the most powerful three letter words in the English language, in the language in general, it doesn't have to be the English language. <laughs> um, because so much can come from that question and it's on both sides of the equation. You know, when things are going well, wow, why is this, why is this so, you know, why is this, happening in such a great way when things are not going well. Ooh, 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 why? <laughs> well, why is this happening? You know, it's a very interesting three letter word, but I think the power of the why is, as you said, like you said, you started something in the day it launched. You're like, what am I? I don't want to want, want this anymore. And so it's very interesting. And I think what you, you didn't say it, but I think I heard an articulation of permission for you to change and rethink to the point of mindfulness. What is it? that you really want. I made a pivot in my career 13 years ago. I was very successful in, in a different industry, different career completely. And I walked completely away. People thought I was a lunatic. Like, are you kidding me? But you were, like you said, you hustle and grind and hustle and grind until the day you get to the place you think you were supposed to go. And then you get there and you're like, well, now what? Right. And I just, I hung it all up. It, it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't a 
nervous breakdown or anything like that. It's about a year and a half. I winded down the business and so, you know, sold off assets or whatever, but it's very interesting to your point of why. And my decision came to my why that I'd set, spent some time on five years prior. So I love how you said that and articulated that. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey and pivot a little bit, not just from the bullet journal, but you've started a few companies. Yes. Mm -hmm. How many companies? Well, I guess you could say I started four. Um, one of them morphed into what eventually became bullet journal. So like I had my own like design studio. That was like gotcha. the first thing. Um, then I started another company with a co-founder, which was supposed to be like my, the dream gig, you know, as a product designer, the whole thing is like, you know, you get a better job, you get a better job, you get a better position, 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 and then you get your own thing, right? You do mm -hmm. your own thing and then you're your own boss. And so I spent two years with my co-founder creating a company called paint to pick, which was a custom paint by number company. So at the time, what you would do is you'd mail in your photo and we print out entire paint by number kit that was customized with custom colors and everything. And yeah, don't get me wrong. It's a cute idea. It brings people together. It like has all the right ingredients. It's super wholesome, but I didn't want to spend the limited time I have on this earth being the paint by numbers guy like that, hmm. that, that wasn't the story I wanted to tell. So I did that. Um, and then I started a nonprofit as well, or helped the founder build it up and also not what I wanted to do it was taken in a direction that didn't interest me. I think it's wonderful work, but it's not something I wanted to dedicate my life to. Yeah. And Interesting. what has become bullet journal. So I had like the holding company and then I had this company and yeah. So, and I've yeah. also worked for a lot of startups. Gotcha. Gotcha. A lot of experience then a lot of experience. Where do you turn in, uh, what do you turn for your mindfulness practices? Is it meditation? Is it yoga? Is it prayer? Is it because you, you come across to me and I know we talked offline and uh, I said, you're super soft spoken and you're running this incredible company, the incredible product you, and I want to talk about community in just a little bit. And if we look at Instagram, I don't know, take, don't take this the wrong way. I just don't know if I saw this hugely successful company, if, if I hear the softness of your speech and the calmness of your demeanor, and for a person who admittedly has ADD, you just have a, a rhythm to your persona that is not exactly typical of what I usually find with super successful entrepreneurs. It is fascinating to me. And, I, and by the way, <laughs> I think it's fantastic. It's a super big compliment, by the way. I'm, I'm super complimenting you. But um, how do you stay mindful? How do you stay grounded? How do you keep the the pace in the success? I guess when you're inside of it all, it doesn't always feel that way. Because when you run your own company, you are intimately familiar with everything that is not going right. Mm. Um, even like when you're successful, you just know like, okay, well that newsletter did half the amount the last one did, or, you know, this person's not enjoying what they're doing. How can I be a better leader here? You know, it's, it's, it's for me, that's not necessarily good or bad. It's just information and trying to figure out how to truly step into who I want to be over and over and over again. And my mindfulness practice is multidimensional and it also really depends on what I'm able to do at the time. Like, for example, like currently I'm quite injured. So like oh, there's certain no. things I can't do. Oh, no. So like, what is the opportunity here to be concrete? Bullet journaling keeps me grounded. Like that's really the core practice. That's why I have zero hesitation to recommending it to so many people because I really believe in it. I can, I started it because I need it and I continue to do it. Not because I'm like some guru who's like now elevated above human problems. Like I still need it all the time because it solves real issues. <laughs> and it's nice because it helps me develop the product as well. Cause sometimes I'll run into something that I haven't solved before because I have problems that I never experienced before. I'm like, Oh, how would I solve that? 
And I think the solving issues and learning, learning that you're able to solve your own problem and that you're the only person who can solve your own problem can change your life. Right. In some ways it's like, Ooh. other people can help you. You can reach out to people, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. You have to do the thing. You have to do the thing. You have to ask for help. You have to accept help. You know, you have to say yes. You have to say no. You have to make the choice. It's up to you. And I feel like the thing with bullet journaling is like, we train that idea over and over again. What do I want more of? What do I want less of? What is vital? What matters? Are there consequences? Like we, a big part of the methodology is asking ourselves questions regularly. So for me, that is very much a mindfulness practice because it grounds me. It makes me very present. Okay. Like, how am I feeling about this? I just had to make a very big choice. that was very difficult for me in my business. I was for a past year and a half, I've been working on a new service for bullet journal that I'm very excited about. It is the culmination of a lot of very challenging life events that I've had to figure my way through. And I found really important tools, really helpful tools, but they're very obscure and abstract. And I wanted to re I wanted to do what I do, which is take very complicated things and make them very simple for people and give them tools that they can use in their everyday life. And I've been really excited to do this and I've been working on it really hard and it was going to launch in January. Right. And then this thing happened for those of you who are listening, I just need I had an accident and I, I hurt my wrist really badly. The, my dominant hand too, ironically, the journaling guy yeah. hurts his writing hand, of course. <laughs> and I had this realization where like, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do the launch. I'm incredibly committed to my work. I'm really excited about doing this thing, but I can't type. I can't really use a mouse with my left hand properly. And as a designer, like I design to think often, like I need to see things. So I'll design hundreds of things before that actual lesson comes together, the materials and this kind of work, th this is exactly the thing, like old writer, old self or productivity first is like, I could get it done by January. I could absolutely get it done by January, but the toll that it would take for me to operate that way how miserable life would become in a week or two where it takes me hours to type out a paragraph. And when like, you know, dictation doesn't work and the technology doesn't work, it would be an uphill battle. But my value here is to try to serve those who invest in this service as powerfully as I possibly can. That's really the output. It's not designing this thing. It's delivering it. It's trying to teach the things that have served me. And if I am miserable for the next six weeks, two months to the point where I cross over the finish line, like that's who they're going to get. They're going to get the miserable guy who's burnt out, who can't do anything. Like what kind of teacher is that? I don't want to go to a class like that. So I had to stop everything and be like, we are pushing this out until I can deliver something that I can show up for fully. I want to create something that really serves people that, that, that can be a powerful framework for them to navigate their lives. And you know who the first customer is me, you like, I better do the thing. I better do the thing or what I have no business telling anybody what else to do. And I have the tools. So like the thing is there's, there's like, you know what to do, but do you do what you know? Right. And that's yeah. like the big thing here. So, that's where the mindfulness comes in for me. Like I was sitting down, <laughs> well, ironically now I have to dictate things, but it's the same system and I'm looking at it. I'm like, I will not be aligned with my values. My actions are not aligned with my values. I'm starting to go right into productivity mode and grind mode for something that's going to not serve me, my team. Cause if I show up all messed up, like how, how, how powerful and inspirational is that? Like, I don't want to be around somebody who's constantly, drowning you know <laughs> and then i love it that's it and and it's as easy as just like keeping track of what you're thinking about and how you're feeling 
I love the way you, I mean, I felt an energy in that dialogue. I felt a disappointment to a certain degree, but I also felt a commitment to your beliefs and your values. And as you said it, I'm going to become someone else for the wrong reason in order to meet this deadline. And they're going to get that manufactured writer because this isn't how I would have delivered it. And I'll be damned if I'm going to put something out where it was just because we said we were going to do it. If I can't be the product of my own product and be that authentic person, that's what I heard. Not sure if that's exactly, I just appreciate that because to your point of hustle and grind culture, it's like, get the deadline, get it out there, get the cash, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. So, um, I appreciate that. I really appreciate your thoughtfulness, your uh, deliberate intentions. I don't know you. We've just, I mean, through a digital search, I land on Bullet Journal. By the way, tell everyone where they can find Bullet Journal and the methodology. Tell them where home is for you. Everything's on bulletjournal.com. There we go. We'll link it up in the show notes. Um, I want to just wrap this up by saying, uh, I appreciate your intention, your intentionality that you reached to solve a problem for yourself. And now it's, it's, it's great for the world. I have been on a journaling off and on path very terribly. Uh, obviously I've been constantly seeking something. Uh, I stumbled on your product. I started listening to your videos, which by the way, we'll link up the YouTube channel as well, because I think it's a fantastic resource. Get your bullet journal and get to the YouTube. You've also got an online course. And you've got a community of raving fans that is just unreal. I just began noticing. And that tells me that this is, look, I, there are some companies that have great products, don't have a community like what you have. And it just is, it's, it's indicative of the real value that people find in the thinking that has led to the bullet journal and the bullet journal method. So um, I'm super happy that we had a chance to connect. Uh, I know you've got to get on to something here really soon. So any parting thoughts for the person who is not journaling, maybe could consider bullet journaling any, give them 30 seconds on what to consider. Yeah. For those who are not journaling, I feel like journaling gets a really, I don't know. For me, when I learned about journaling, it was like, write about something every day, right? And sometimes there wasn't anything there. It's like, I ate a sandwich today. I didn't do anything today. Like for a lot, a lot of people who don't journal, that's what the reality is. Even for people who do journal, they feel like it's this another chore that they have to do. It's a work, do. it's something to do, something to do. It, exactly. So if you're not into journaling at all, I guess the, the, the place where I begin, it's like to consider it a thought partner. Right. It's a way for you to actually express how you're feeling about anything. It's that's the place where you can vent. That's the place where you can write down an idea. Like a journal can become a paper mirror, right? It, 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 it's, it can be a reflection of your life and it can be an incredibly powerful way to help you see your own blind spots and just like, it's, it's, a lot of people look for the solutions outside of themselves. And yes, of course, they're incredibly powerful tools and mentors and lessons. I learn from people all the time, but ultimately you have to get very clear on what you think, what you feel. And that begins as simple as just keeping a tr keeping track of that on pen and paper, because the beautiful thing about journaling is that it freezes experiences in time and it doesn't have to be long. It's just writing down three or four things a day. It's like delivered the project today. Did not really feel like I accomplished anything by doing that. You do that for a week. You're like, Oh, interesting. I worked on this thing that I've been waiting a year to work on and it's making me feel good. It's making me feel not good. That's just something good to be aware of. So you're cultivating awareness just by writing down what's going on for you. And if you don't know what to do with your feelings, it's a great place to start as well. Like, I don't know how to feel about this. Well, try putting some words to it. Are you angry? Are you disgusted? Are you disappointed? Like these are all different things. And it's a really good way to get in touch with what's happening for you and realizing that that's happening for you. I know that for myself, 
that was a big shift because everything was like, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. You know, went to this event, have to do this. Where am I in my life? <laughs> What's the life inside? This is the life outside. So journaling is a great thought partner for you to also think through stuff. You have to have a hard conversation, have that conversation on paper before you talk to that person, get your thoughts straight. It's, it's a really powerful tool. And that's not even bullet journaling. That's anything you want to do. I know I'm, I'm my own worst salesman, but if you are interested in bullet journaling, what I would say is do not look for it online because what you see there is the expression of other people. Like a lot of places we will find is like Pinterest and Instagram. And I'm not saying that that is wrong, but those channels happen to be for very visual people and people can express themselves very visually in a bullet journal. Like they can spend hours coming up with spreads and habit trackers and that's fine, but that's not necessarily what bullet journal is. It begins very simple. Like if you ever see my own examples, it's pen and paper, it's, it's chicken scratch. I can hardly draw a straight line with this stuff. So I would say start simple start on bulletjournal.com where there's a lot of free resources, a lot of free tutorials, the YouTube video. And the last part is set an intention. And this is the only thing where I actually have something in the notebook as well. Cause I feel like a tool is only as powerful as its purpose. So what do you want to bullet journal for? What are you hoping to get out of it? To be kinder to yourself, to be more focused, to remember more things about your family, because immediately that provides you with a frame. That's it. And it can be anything. You can have multiple intentions, but just taking a moment to think about it. It's like, I want to manage my ADD. I want to feel less anxiety. And all of a sudden that can be the kind of thought that you collect. That's what your, your organizing principle. And it can be multiple things. I have multiple intentions, but start simple, start with the basics, be patient. The bullet journal method is also very modular. So it's a, it's a framework of different tools. And as you learn about it, pick the tools that address your challenges, right? Like if you need a way to remember your day, start with the daily log. If you need a way to remember your week, Deal with a weekly log. Need a way to organize your thoughts? Look at the index. It's modular for a reason. So you can customize it to meet your specific challenges. Keep it simple, keep it relevant, and just be patient with yourself. Great way to end the show. Couldn't have been better. Ryder Carroll, thank you so much for creating the product, for uh, leaning into your own journey to solve a problem for your own life. Thank you for blessing the world with it. And thank you for blessing our, our audience with some time today on the MindShift Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Hit the subscribe button so you can become a part of the MindShift community. We'll help you shift your mind so you can shift your results.